Hi folks. Have you ever really thought about how you pray? Hopefully you do a lot of praying, but have you taken the time to look at how you do it? Have you considered what things that you include in those prayers? Have you examined your attitude as you've prayed? Probably not, but that's exactly what I'm going to ask you to do over these next several weeks as we start this series on prayer. We're going to look at one of the greatest prayers of all time, Jesus, and see what he says about prayer. We will focus on his words and of the words of Jesus in Matthew chapter 6. Today we're going to start the series with a message entitled The Chat Room. A chat room is a designated area on the internet where people can exchange information about a particular subject or an area of special interest. The very first chat rooms were launched in 1980 and revolved around the CB radio culture at the time. And there were 40 different channels that involved into the concept of chat rooms. It's hard to believe that they've been around that long. You may be asking yourself, what does a chat room have to do with the Bible? Well, when it comes to the internet, <laughs> not much. On the other hand, think about it this way. What is prayer? You see, prayer is communication with God. We have a chat with God. Collins Dictionary defines chat as to talk or converse in a light, easy, informal manner. Now you may argue that prayer is a serious thing and you would be correct. But the point that I am trying to make here is that prayer should not be an uncomfortable thing for us. It should be very easy for us to talk to God. It should not be something that we avoid we should look forward to spending time with God in prayer. And when we spend time with God, we share a shared interest, Him. And the first point is, prayer should be first and foremost about God and not us. Just in case that didn't sink in, let me say it one more time. Prayer is first and foremost about God not us that is probably one area that we all need to work on too often we make our prayers about us what we need or want what we want God to do for us where we want God to step up in all of our lives and when we pray our focus should be on God we need to remember who He is and approach Him with the respect and reverence and praise that He deserves. Without God, there is no prayer. Only talking. Us talking without Him even being in the conversation. We might as well be looking in the mirror when we pray if it is without thinking about God. If your conversation is one-sided, you might as well just write everything down and mail it to yourself. As we examine his word today, we need to always keep that in mind. Prayer should be first and foremost about God and not us. Let's go to Matthew chapter 6 and see what Jesus has to say about prayer. Begin with verse 1. Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. And so when you give to the needy, do not approach it. Announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogues or on the streets to be honored by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received the reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let the left hand know what the right hand is doing so that your giving may be in secret and then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you and when you pray do not be like the hypocrites who for they love to pray standing in the synagogues or on the street corners to be seen by others 
truly I tell you, they have received the reward in full. And when you pray, go into your room, close your door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. And then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like the pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. So let's go back now and take a closer look at the words of Jesus. And so the second point here is, prayer is not something we should use to show others how righteous we are. Let me say that again. Prayer is not something we should use to show others how righteous we are. Verse 1 says, Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. And look at what verse 2 says. Do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogues or in the streets to be honored by others. These two are, verses are, are about giving, but the principles and motivations are still the same. It is about being seen as an awesome individual. Look at me. I am very special and I'm a very righteous individual. <laughs> Do you wish you were more like me? Well, good luck with that because I am way more righteous than you are. <laughs> now, we laugh, but that seems to be the attitude of these folks here. We are they, they are looking for a pat on the back or positive reinforcement from those around them for their praise. When you pray, do you pray like that? Remember the first point of this message is prayer should be first and foremost about God and not us. Look at what Jesus says in verse 5. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received the reward in full. Praying in public can be an obstacle to a lot of us. We may get nervous or even avoid it altogether. You may be worried about what others think about how you pray and want to make a good impression. Our goal should not be the approval of others, but a true conversation with God, with them just listening in or praying along with you. If others are judging your prayers, that is an issue for them to deal with, not you. There is no need for you to try and impress them as a matter of fact, Jesus tells us not to. Prayer is not something we should use to show others how righteous we are. When we try to impress others, our words turn in to something else. Look at what Jesus says in verse 7. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. If our goal is to impress others, our words turn into a heap of nothingness. They are worthless. All we get from them is the shallow praise of others. Jesus tells us in verse 8, Do not be like them. And the third point is, Prayer is a private and intimate conversation with God. Prayer is a private and intimate conversation with God. Look at what Jesus says in verse 6. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. And then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. All of us are busy, but we need to set aside a time for God every day. Last week, we talked about using a portion of time to read His Word. We need to spend time in prayer as well. We need to find a time and place to do that. There 
is no required time or place, but we need to be mindful of how we do it. We need to approach prayer not from a worldly point of view, but the way Jesus tells us to do it. Jesus tells us to find a place where we can be alone with God, just Him and us. We need to find an oasis in the middle of this wild and busy world and our wild and busy schedule to meet with God in peace and quiet away from all the distractions. You would not take a bath in the middle of an intersection because it is a private and personal experience. The same goes for praying. If there are distractions around us, your attention will be drawn to those things and away from God. Those distractions become an obstacle to reaching that moment of closeness with God. Make it your top priority to arrange this special time with God daily. Give Him first place in your life. Show Him that you love Him with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, as Matthew 22, 37 says. Find a time and a place that lets you have intimate time with God. Find your personal chat room. Make it a sacred time and place. Protect it. Treasure it. Verse 4 tells us, Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Spending the time with God should be a very personal and life-changing experience. There should be a more special time each day than when we pray. There should be no more special time and place each day than when we pray to God, when we kneel before Him in intimacy and experience His peace and love. Prayer is a private and intimate conversation with God. The fourth thing, we cannot hide anything from Him, so be open and honest with God. Do you have trouble confessing things to God? Are there things in your life that you are ashamed of? Things that you know do not please God and need to be taken care of? Things that you are too embarrassed about to bring up in prayer? We know they are sins and they are not what God wants. So we try to hide them from God. Those are the things that we need to pray about. We do not bring them up when we are with God, but we need to. It becomes like dirty laundry that was put in the closet hoping that no one would discover it. No one would smell it, but it doesn't hide. Sooner or later, the smell becomes overwhelming and it is discovered. In our effort to hide these things, they permeate other areas of our lives and start to affect our walk there as well all because we tried to hide them. Now here's the truth. God knows everything about us. He created us and knows us down to the very, the very single hair on our heads. We need to be open and honest with Him. He already knows. He's just waiting for us to confide in Him, 
to trust Him. Our God is a loving God and wants us to be genuine and truthful in our approach toward Him. If something is wrong in your life, tell Him about it. Let Him help you with it. If you have a need in your life, discuss it with Him. Embrace His knowledge and power. Uncover those things that you have hidden for so long and bring them to Him in prayer. Jesus tells us in verse 7, For your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. God knows our thoughts. God knows our hearts. Even if we think we can hide things, God already knows everything. With that in mind, it really does make sense to it really does not make sense to try and hide things from him. Make it your goal to share everything with him. If you need to confess, confess. If you need help, then ask him for help. If you need direction, then ask him for guidance. If you need strength, then ask God for strength. If you need encouragement, ask the one who can give you exactly what you need. And that's God. We cannot hide anything from Him, so why do we try? Be open and honest with God. And so we talked about prayer today as we started this series. The first thing we said was that prayer should be first and foremost about God, not us. And then we said prayer is not something we should use to show others how righteous we are. And thirdly, Prayer is a private and intimate conversation with God. And finally, we cannot hide anything from Him, so be open and honest with God. Think about those things when you think about your prayer life. Over the next several messages, we're going to talk even more about this. But here's a place to start. And I hope that you will pray more often and that you will look at how you pray. And that, like other areas, when we study the scriptures where we want to get better at being a good son or, or daughter of him, that we follow his ways, well... Our prayer life is the same way. And so let's all together look at what Jesus had to say about prayer and see if it can't help us do a better job in our prayer life. I love you all. I miss you all. May God bless each and every one of you.